Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the basics of the taxation and reporting for a Singapore CPF. Uh, we do a lot with Singapore, we have a separate guide for Singapore in general, but since we get so many questions and field so many concerns about the Singapore CPF, uh, Central Provident Fund, why don't we go through the basics of that. CPF is sort of hybrid between a, um, a 401k and Social Security. Uh, it's required if you're living in Singapore, working for a Singaporean employer. It's got different aspects to it. You've got your Medisave. Um, you could do different things with it even before you're, you're retired. Uh, you can use it to purchase properties under certain restrictions. Uh, you can invest it in different items such as um, iFund, for example, for, for mutual funds. And, and it's, it's very versatile. Okay. It enjoys tax deferred status if you're if you're in Singapore and you're a non-US person. So let's say you're a non-US person, you're in Singapore, you're living the life, you're enjoying yourself, you're making money, your CPF is growing, great. You became a US person, boo, right? <laughs> From a tax perspective, it gets pretty tough. So there is no tax treaty with the US and Singapore. So as with other treaties, it will designate how certain you know, income is taxed, and pensions and retirement and social security and things like that. There's none. Back in 1996 and 1997, I believe, those were the years the IRS issued some memos and they essentially take the position that if you're a U.S. person, a U.S. citizen, legal permanent resident, foreign national subject to U.S. tax um, because you meet the substantial presence test, then contributions made on your behalf is taxable, okay? Your employer in the U.S. puts money into a 401k. It's pre-tax. You don't get hit with tax until it's distributed later. But when it comes to a foreign uh, pension, such as uh, the CPF, the IRS doesn't recognize it. And so when it gets put in there, uh, you have to pay tax on it. Even worse is the growth. Because I say even worse because a lot of people come to the U.S. and it's just sitting there growing, right? You may have a half a million dollars, a million bucks in there. Basically generates it around 3%. It's, it's, it's nice. Um, but from a growth perspective... The memo also said uh, that the growth within the fund is taxable. So that's pretty tough, right? If you're getting, uh, if you have a retirement or a pension plan in a country like the UK or any country where there's a treaty, essentially, until that money becomes, uh, if it's available and distributed to you, then it's taxable. And there's certain rules with its saving clause may impact it, things of that nature. So when it comes to the CPF, not only is it taxable, but it's reportable. Right, it's uh, it's generally reported on the F bar. It's con considered, <laughs> excuse me, it's considered a foreign financial account. Uh, it's reported on the form eighty nine thirty eight, uh, specified foreign financial asset. It may be a PFIC, and, and that depends. Um, some clients will have significant mutual funds in, uh, will have significant mutual fund investments in the PFIC, and whether or not they're being switched out, redeemed, uh, if it's available, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, could impact it. Uh, some questions we get, there's some bad information online about establishing a basis in, uh, in the Singapore, and it goes like this. If you come to the U.S., become a U.S. person, you have a certain amount that's probably not going to be considered taxable because you weren't a U.S. person. If you don't start paying tax on the growth while you're here, your basis doesn't go up, okay? If you come here with $30,000, let us just say, and it's going up, I don't know, $1,000 a year, and you don't pay tax on that growth, and then when it hits $40,000, you want to you want to take it out, your, your basis isn't 40000 because you didn't pay any tax on the growth during those 10 years beforehand. Okay, so generally the idea in order to establish basis, you have to pay either you're a non-US person or you're paying tax on the growth and increasing the basis amount each year based on the accrued growth that you've already paid tax on. If you have unreported CPFs and other accounts, maybe you've got um, accounts at DBS, PSO, POSB, or... Citibank or any other type of investment accounts or unit trusts or things like that, you may want to consider getting to compliance. The IRS has several programs available to assist you. Uh, they've got VDP, or, uh, which is for people who are either willful or just can't certify under penalty of perjury that they're non-willful. Uh, despite what some attorneys may incorrectly tell you, signing something with the IRS under penalty of perjury is a big deal. Uh, you've got the streamlined procedures. Streamline domestic offshore procedures, streamline foreign offshore procedures, uh, reasonable cause and delinquency are alternatives to the streamlined if you're non-wolfful. We have lots of information available on our main website, goldenlawyers.com. Uh, you can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.